We begin with the big breaking news. FSU has a new head football coach just an hour ago. Word that Willie Taggart will now lead the Knowles. He's originally from Bradenton, Florida. Taggart in just his first year coaching at Oregon. He brought the Ducks one of the best recruiting classes in the nation. Our sports director Kevin Keene is here now to lead our coverage of this big hire for Knoll Nation. Kevin. Julie, Athletic Director Stan Wilcox didn't mince words Saturday after FSU's win over Louisiana Monroe. He said, we're going to make this coaching search quick and swift. Surely enough, Kenny, five days later, Willie Taggart officially the head coach here at Florida State. Yeah, no time wasted, right? Uh, but hey, we heard right from the get-go when we first started hearing rumors that Jimbo might leave, that they, when FSU started the vetting process for coaches, Willie Taggart was the name we all heard right from the start. And, and to me, I think this is, we were just talking about it, this is a home run hit for FSU. This is a guy who is a great recruiter. He's done a good job at Western Kentucky and South Florida and a good job at Oregon, get those programs kind of back on track. And on top of that, you know, I saw a story earlier out west uh, that his family, huge FSU fans, this is his dream job. So if he does well here, why else leave? He could be here for as long as he wants. There you go. You take a look at his track record, too. Doesn't necessarily have a winning record as a head coach, but you have to go back and look at the programs right. uh, that he took over. He took over a Western Kentucky team that I believe was winless the year before. Mm -hmm. He brought them up to seven, eight wins, took over a USF team that had three wins the year before, eventually got them to a 10-win program. Of course, uh, last year or this past year spent at Oregon, uh, they were a seven-win team, also had them as a top 10 ranked recruiting class in the nation. You'd have to imagine he's going to bring that here to Tallahassee and that's something players we've already been seeing on on Twitter are extremely excited about. They are and that's good news for FSU right because we saw I think seven or eight kids decommit this past week. Well watch that number just fluctuate like crazy in the coming days because like I said he's a great recruiter especially here in the state of Florida. Him being a Florida guy born and raised he knows the hotbeds for the best recruits so don't be surprised if we see that recruit number jump from 11 up to 15, 16, 17 in the coming days. Those recruiting ties here to Florida certainly going to pay dividends, I'm sure, for the Seminoles uh, in the weeks to come. Also have the early signing period to worry about uh, in, in mid-December. Uh, Seminoles, I'm sure, on their mind to get him in there early for that and start regrouping this program uh, and, and taking the steps to get them back to where Stan Wilcox and President Thrasher know that can be. Uh, Julie, we'll send it back to you guys for now. Willie Taggart, the new head coach here in Tallahassee. All right, Kevin, Kenny, thanks so much. And, of course, we're still waiting for a statement from FSU uh, confirming this hire and telling us more about it. But stay with us for continuing coverage of Willie Taggart's hiring. Our team working on more reaction to this breaking news and more confirmation as it comes in. More coming up as it happens and at 536 and 11. A former spokesman for Florida's Child Welfare Agency arrested for possession of child pornography. 67-year-old Thomas William Barnes was arrested in Gainesville last week. Now he's facing 10 more child porn charges. Police say they searched Barnes' computer and found more than 50 inappropriate images of children, some of them as young as 6 years old. Barnes is being held on $900,000 bond. We do have continuing coverage now of the murder at a veteran's housing complex and concerns about security there. All that happening at the Homefront Apartments in Tallahassee on Saturday. That is a complex for homeless veterans. Police say one vet is now accused of killing another vet inside a second-story apartment. 63-year-old Thomas Bullock is the man behind bars accused of stabbing Joseph Borelli to death. Authorities believe the two were arguing after watching the Georgia-Auburn football game on Saturday. Our Lenitra Bennett's been looking into the story and more developments about living conditions at that complex. She joins us now. Lenitra. Eden and Julie, the veterans I spoke to say the violence is only one of many problems at home front apartments, citing maintenance and building concerns as ongoing issues. One tenant, Gary Dennis, invited me on the property. He says he'd had to go without air conditioning for a period. He says parts of the structure are rotted, such as the stair railings and beams that hold the second floor up. Another big problem, some tenants say, is illegal activity that goes on by tenants and outsiders. The Big Bend Coalition, which is over the housing complex for veterans, says it's been working to address the concerns. We really support our tenants' um, self-advocacy. We support them organizing themselves. We support them making sure they're heard. 
because this may be their, this may be their permanent housing for the rest of their lives. Um, it may be a program that they only pass through. Dennis is also concerned about the number of abandoned vehicles sitting in the parking lot. Smith does admit it's time to tow them. She says they were originally giving people time to get on their feet and take care of it themselves. I just got an update less than a half an hour ago. I'm told stickers are now on the cars to warn people that they will be towed, but the vehicles are still there as of now. I'll have more on some of the security concerns coming up at six. For now, guys, back to you. Okay, Lenitra, thank Thank you. Covering Florida right now at the Capitol, a renewed debate about the power of unions in the state. New legislation would put public employee unions out of business if they don't maintain at least 50% membership. And as Mike Vasilinda tells us, unions are arguing that that idea puts politics ahead of good government. It is unions, more often than not, that bring hundreds, if not thousands, to the state Capitol to rally against what they consider bad public policy. And it is Democrats, more often than not, who get union endorsements. Now a GOP-sponsored bill would require at least half the people represented by a union actually be union members. One person could claim to represent 10,000. And again, I, I don't think that that is right. Well, the committee debated two dozen union members protested outside. We do not do this job to get rich or to become famous. We do this because we believe in the work. Not included in the 50%. House floor last year, and uh, again, this is about transparency, democracy, and accountability. The legislation is expected to clear the House early in the legislative session. Its future in the Senate is cloudy. Mike Vasilinda, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. Opponents are already threatening a court challenge if the legislature passes that bill. An update just one week now until that contentious Senate election in Alabama. Republican Roy Moore staying in the race despite accusations of sexual misconduct years ago. He's up against Democrat Doug Jones for the Senate seat. Tonight, Moore's hoping to appeal to voters. He and Steve Bannon are hosting a rally at 630 in Fairhope, Alabama. Moore's pushing to get voters to look beyond those sexual misconduct allegations. A colleague's now calling on Florida State Senator Jack Latvala to resign. Latvala is accused of sexual harassment. 35-year-old Rachel Rogers has filed a complaint and provided several text messages between her and Latvala. Flagler County State Senator Travis Hudson, a fellow Republican, now says Latvala should resign before he, quote, burns the Senate down. And I don't know if he's guilty of this or not. That's, that's between him and her. But attacking his accuser publicly releasing text messages. Uh, I mean, he is coming after this entire political process. He is, I feel like he's trying to burn it all to the ground. I really do. And I think it's only going to get worse for everyone involved. And I think the best thing would be a resignation from Senator Latvala. Latvala has denied those allegations, saying it is political because he's running for governor. The alleged victim is requesting a special prosecutor investigate the claims. Let's check our weather now. A live look outside and look at that beautiful sunshine and it warmed up and it felt like spring out there today and I guess we should soak it up because it's going to change. Give us the bad news, Mike McCall. Yeah, you, you may just want to go out there and grab as much of that as you can and, and kind of hold it in because tomorrow is when things will start to change rather quickly. Actually, starting tonight, we'll start to see those changes. Showing you the morning lows because I want, to, want you to keep these numbers in mind. Today, we started out nicely enough in the low to mid 50s. Uh, there may be a day a little later on in this week when we won't even see these kind of numbers for daytime highs. So that's how much it will change. And look at the current temperature, still in the 70s. We've seen some cities touching 80 today, but look at the radar and that tells the story. Out here to our northwest, that's where we're starting to see the showers gathering, even some thunderstorms. But this is all part of a very strong cold front. It's finally going to move its way in here. We're talking about not just the initial band of showers, but then some rain and some cold rain.
coming in by the time we get to Thursday and Friday. All the details, mm. a few more minutes. Cold rain. <laughs> Sounds great, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew it wouldn't last forever. Yeah, but we hope the weather's not going to discourage you from joining us for WCTV's Kindness yeah. Day. That is Thursday. We're teaming up with Kia of Tallahassee. We're going to be there all day long. That's right. We're collecting toys, food, other items to help families this holiday season. You can also donate cash. You can stop by. You can give blood. So many ways to give. That's Kindness Day, Thursday the 7th. That's at Kia on West Tennessee Street in Tallahassee. Won't you please come join us? Brave the rain and the cold. Yeah, we'd love to see. You know, that day is great because we get we take lots of pictures and selfies and, and lots of hugs as well. And uh, we're always so thankful that we have an opportunity to give back to this great, community. A great outpouring by the community as well. And still to come on Eyewitness News at 5, enrollment up dramatically in Obamacare. We're going to take a look at what's fueling the fast-paced signups. That's our health alert next. Life, it changes fast, but hearing loss often changes slowly. Don't delay. Call Miracle Ear today for your free hearing.